basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Back inside the Breslin Center. Adding to the atmosphere, lights go out. The Spartans are introduced. We take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings again for Michigan State. You see Marvin Clark Jr. starting his first start as a freshman. Brandon Dawson will not play. He is out with the flu for Santa Clara. The backcourt must play big tonight. Brandon Clark and Jared Brownridge if the Broncos are going to pull off the upset here in East Lansing. Just more than a week in the 2014-15 campaign. Look at the Big Ten records over the weekend. Nebraska losing at Rhode Island. Ohio State won last night, beating up on Sacred Heart. Shannon Scott set a Buckeye single-game record, dishing out 16 assists in Ohio State's win yesterday in Columbus. New week, that means a new AP poll, and Wisconsin moves up. Number two, the Badgers undefeated 4-0. You see at the bottom, Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State, 16, 19, and 20, respectively. Head coaches tonight, Tom Izzo, 20th year. Back on Friday in Michigan State's win here over Loyola, Tom Izzo picked up career win number 470. On the other side, Kerry Keating, Seton Hall grad, class of 83, eighth year. With the Broncos, this team selected to finish tied for seventh in the West Coast Conference this season. Broncos are two and one. Spartans are two and one. And tonight, just the second all-time meeting between these two programs. You have to go back to the Maui Invitational in 1995, and Santa Clara won that game behind 23 points from Steve Nash. That was Tom Izzo's third game as Michigan State's head coach. Little did anybody know that night they were going against a future two-time NBA MVP and Hall of Famer to be Steve Nash. No Steve Nash on the floor tonight, though, I don't think. <laughs> Definitely not here. I see Brandon Dawson again did not partake in shoot-around today. Alvin Ellis is out. Javon Best is also out for the Spartans. Tom Izzo not rolling out. Ellis could play later on this week in Orlando. We'll guarantee them. Opening tap controlled by the Spartans and Travis Trice, the senior. Denzel, Washington bounces to Costello. Now back to Valentine along the baseline. In the corner, Clark for three. You know what? That was some good movement. Both sides of the of the ball. Michigan State moving it offensively. And I thought Santa Clara did a pretty good job of rotating defensively. Marvin Clark hit three threes on Friday, 15 points. Barry's his first one tonight. Brandon Clark had nine points in Santa Clara's loss to Utah State on Wednesday. Here's Brownridge for three. And the rebound run down by Denzel Johnson. And now the pass thrown away. And Trice will let it go out of bounds, and it'll be Spartan basketball. Michigan State swung the ball from one side to the other, so Clark had a great look at this, and you see the confidence and the pretty stroke. 6'6", 225. Tom Izzo saying the strongest freshman he's ever had in his 20 years. Now you're looking at on your screen right there. Bench press 185, 26 times. Uh, very yeah. nice, very nice. I remember a time when weightlifting was not considered a good thing when it came to basketball, but of course that was a long time ago. We know better now. Officials checking to see if indeed Clark is going to be credited with the three, and he will be. Rob Kuhneman, Glenn Mayborg, and Ray Perron, the officials tonight. And it's win on Friday opened up at a 17-2 run. It an easy win, but now the Spartans throw it away and they turn it over. Michigan State can expect changing defenses from Santa Clara throughout this game. So far, they've faced a zone and then man-to-man -man just to try to keep them off balance as part of their defensive strategy. Broncos have more guards than forwards without two key post players tonight. Air ball from Hubbard, but the tap is up in there for Pugh. 
Well, good job of offensively rebounding the basketball, but not too, not too pleased with the shot selection early on by Santa Clara. And they're going to need to take good shots if they're going to be in this game. The shot clock has malfunctioned, and, and they're going to talk things over as both teams go to the respective benches. I thought I heard an errant horn the first uh, possession. It's two so far tonight, Greg. And Ray Perone is going to see what's going on at the scores table. This ball game tonight really is the opening game of the Orlando Classic. The teams let down to Florida. Michigan State will practice tomorrow, then fly down tomorrow night. Santa Clara also will make its way to the Sunshine State tomorrow. Let's go back to the Aaron Horn that we heard a moment ago. Shot clock never reset. Strice is at half court. See if Ray Perone has ended his conversation. And you know, Corey, I'll say this. With the howling wind and dropping temperatures out there, here in the state of Michigan, not a bad time to be heading down to the Sunshine <laughs> State. You want to go? You know, absolutely. You're not kidding. This morning you woke up around here. It was temperatures in the 50s. It was nice. It's a light rain. Then by well, 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon, the temperatures plummeted <laughs> to about 20 degrees cooler. Welcome to Michigan. Yeah, blustery night. But you're a Minneapolis guy, so you know how that goes. This is it. Yeah, for me, this is like Maui. I'm, I'm fine. This is wonderful. <laughs> See the shot clock adjustment 32. And we resume. 3 2 game. Costello to Valentine up top for three. Hubbard boxing out good position on Costello inside. Chris Clark had a 31 point game earlier this year. That was good patience that time by Santa Clara. You push it up the floor, explore, but if nothing is there, use that shot clock. Shot clock is under 10. Johnson off the fake. Hubbard has to hurry with three. That's a three-point try. And Trice skies for the rebound. Good patience, good look. This is State limiting the Broncos to just one shot. Price, he'll pop for three. And the tap from Costello keeps it alive for Michigan State. He's swinging around. Trice will drive. Open Valentine. That's a three. <laughs> Coaching staff from Michigan State feels that Valentine needs to have a nice game for his confidence. Not a bad thing to have that first one go down, especially from deep. Five of 15 on the year, beyond the arc. Spartans by four. Pew had it blocked by Costello. And it comes into the hands of Bryn Forbes. Lead pass, Trice. Alley open. Clark on the other end. Just two passes up the floor. And Clark slammed it down. He's got five. Picture perfect. Fast break and finish by the Spartans. Started with good defense. Nice penetration from Brownridge, but Pew could not finish. Got to hit that tonight. Valentine bounces for Clark. Contact. We play on. Costello fouled on the offensive attempt. And he will shoot two. This ball doesn't touch the floor. And when you can boast that and come away with a finish such as this, you know you've done your fast break quite well. Beautiful by the Spartans. Now, Greg, you mentioned the transition game, the running part of the game. Speaking with Tom Izzo today, he felt his team did not run enough in the first half on Friday. Got better in the second half. Well, if they're going to run the night, they have to do exactly what they did a moment ago. Get a stop. Do it with rebound. Do it with rebounding, or do it with the block shot, force a turnover. That will ignite your transition game. Substitution for Santa Clara, Nate Cratch, sophomore from Watertown, Minnesota, checks in. Jarvis Pugh picked up the foul a moment ago. He departs. Costello splits the two free throws. Ron Ridge.
Bridge met immediately by Trice. Now the handoff for Clark, guarded by Valentine, and he's bumped. First foul on Denzel Valentine, the junior from Lansing. The Big Ten Digital Network is now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access to hundreds of non-televised games. Then enjoy them on even more platforms wherever you are. At BTN Plus now available on BTN to go. Looked like he walked and he did along the baseline. He was defended well. Second turnover. I mentioned that Clark held at just nine points in Santa Clara's last game. He marked the first time in 25 games he did not score at least 10. Try his speed crash. Took advantage of the speed and he was fouled. And this will be on crash. And that will take us to a timeout. Here in East Lansing, Michigan State, a big early on tonight, 9-2 game. Clark has five, a three, and a dunk a moment ago, all Spartans early tonight. This <laughs> in on Michigan State, Tom Izzo, 17 straight NCAA tournament appearances, eight-time National Coach of the Year. Is no stranger at scheduling a tough non-conference schedule. We've seen that again so far this year already. Michigan State has played Duke. And Greg, if things play out this week in Orlando, Michigan State could play Kansas on Sunday. So you could see in a stretch of just about two, two and a half weeks, in November alone, Duke and Kansas long before conference play. Yeah, it's part of the plan. And, you know, folks around the East Lansing area, they come to expect Michigan State to play that tough schedule. Maybe take a few lumps early, but be rock solid at tournament time. Tom Izzo, of course, his first two years here, the NIT tournament, he's been in the postseason every year that he's coached here, but his first two years in the NC, the NIT tournament, and then 17 straight NCAA tournament appearances. Six final fours, heck of a resume, man. Clark can't hit the three, no doubt. Six of the first eight games, the Spartans will play away from the Breslin Center. question now is can the Broncos get penetration can they get quality penetration in other words inside for a high percentage shot or a decent kick out for a wide open exterior shot Broward had a good look missed on the three there Trice will push it down back so who rolls Naren Jr. Tum Tum his first attempt and he buries it the freshman from the Bahamas Trice is doing a really nice job of pushing the basketball for Michigan State. Attacking that defense, putting pressure on them immediately. Here's Trice. He's pushed it. He brings it back out. And then he's able to hit Naren Jr. What a nice jumper. Who rolls Naren Jr., but he's going to go by Tum Tum. He's from the Oscar-winning movie Three Ninjas. Just about every word possible. One of the characters was named Tum Tum. And was a nickname that was given to him many years ago, and he would prefer to be called Tum Tum in his collegiate career. Well, I like the uh, singer who... <laughs> the late, yeah, the real. Lou Rawls was one of the all-time greats. Denzel Johnson can't hit. Up the floor, fours. Around Clark, and he's fouled. From Forbes, you see playing with that cast on his left hand. Pretty hard foul there, but a good foul. You don't give up the end one. You make Forbes have to earn it at the free throw line. Michigan State, very determined to push the basketball. It's obvious today. So Forbes shooting two, and this is the front end. Spartans as a team coming in just 55 or 70. Yeah, that's not going to get it, and they know that. Tom Izzo talked, to, talked about that when we spoke a little bit before the game, how that is one of the things that has surprised them from a negative standpoint, the team's ability to step to that line and knock down free throws. Didn't anticipate this. Oh. Oh. Forbes makes the second in the game on Friday. Forbes changed up his cast, a less cumbersome cast. His non-shooting hand fractured the third metacarpal in his left hand. Tom Izzo had a young man wear a cast for a whole season 
back in the late 90s, and he ended up having an all-Big Ten campaign. I'm talking about Morris Peterson. Johnson missed another miss. And one field goal so far tonight for Santa Clara. One for nine. Aaron. Now to strikes for 15 to shoot. The Wallenman checking in for Michigan State. Hands it back off to Strice. Shot clock is under 10. Swing to four. So pop for three. Yeah. They are really moving the basketball and moving themselves to the open spots on the floor. On Friday, Michigan State opened things up, leading 17 to 2 tonight. It's a 15-2 score early on. And this is going to go the other way. Foul called on Santa Clara away from the ball. You're going to see the ball changing hands and changing sides of the floor, too. And there's the extra pass right there, which is usually pretty unguardable. Aaron Jr. on the assist, Forbes on the bucket. The pass, I'm glad you brought up the pass in there, Greg, because you go back to the game on Friday, 27 assists on 36 field goals for Michigan State, and we're seeing that play out again early tonight. Yeah, they're going to have a high, high number tonight the way they're moving it. Mad Hunter gives first. That's now 14 fouls on the Broncos. Good screen from Schilling. Fade away from Trice. Schilling, the offensive putback, and scores. Michigan State is really starting to assert its muscle on the glass. Both ends. Gavin Schilling without Dawson. Still the front quarter factor early on tonight for Michigan State. You know, when you're moving your body, you make yourself very difficult not only to guard, but you make yourself difficult to block out. And Schilling was able to take full advantage in there using that length and strength for an offensive putback. Michigan State dominating right now. It's a 14-0 run. Every more than five minutes. And the Spartans during the stretch. 14-0 run. Six different Michigan State players have scored. Remember what we talked about for the, the Broncos. They have got to figure out a way to get quality shots, especially now with Michigan State limiting them to but one shot. Tough shot for Brownridge, but he's fouled. So you see Santa Clara doing something they try and do each and every game, that is get to the free throw line. They're averaging about 20 free throw attempts per game so far this year. Well, the convincing pump fake allowed Brownridge the opportunity to get in there and work himself to the free throw line. The problem for this entire Santa Clara roster is that they're not a very good free throw shooting team. Brown, and it's early in the year. You know, we're talking about guys that maybe have been there only four or five times. Brownridge now five and ten. At the line, you see the accolades for Brownridge last year, the West Coast Conference newcomer of the year. See, he went, he made two and bumped his uh, free throw percentage from 44 to 60, just like that. <laughs> he could do that early on. <laughs> Back to their zone defense, the Broncos. Needs to be a 1-2-2 two, two, or 2-3. Two, Tom Tell will pull off just outside the free throw line. Rebound inside to crash. Nice job on the zone. You force the outside shot and then shot, shot and then you rebound the miss. So that was a good defensive sequence for the Broncos. Kevin Wardlow in for Santa Clara. And now it's crash. Kai Healy is set to redshirt. He will not with the reverse. Wow. And the freshman, born in Indianapolis, but was raised in Australia as the second Broncos field goal tonight. That was pretty sweet, especially to finish. But this zone defense is pretty good, I think, for Santa Clara. As long as they can rebound out of it. Michigan State has not shown that they can penetrate it on the, in the middle right now. Forbes for three. And the rebound loose inside, and it looked like Costello reached around, and he did. So he'll be called for the foul. Bryn Forbes and the Spartans. A big early on tonight. 
Forbes came in in a couple of threes on Friday. It's hot early tonight, Michigan State by 11. Let's learn a bit more about the Santa Clara Broncos. Go in on Saturday, practice here yesterday before the game tonight. Found at 1851, beautiful campus just south of San Francisco. A year ago, the Broncos 14 and 19, bringing back three starters, but without a couple of key post players tonight. Manuel and Dumaya, you see him there. Also out, Yana Katanga. Injured and will not play. That's Tonga on the left and Endumaya on the right. Endumaya's got an injured left foot. Tonga out with a sore knee. And those two guys, 6'8", 230, 6'9", 270, would have been a huge bonus to have inside tonight. You better believe it. That's a lot of rebounding being missed, shot blocking being missed, intimidation being missed, presence being missed. Now a turnover on... Santa Clara off the hands of Johnson. Fourth turnover for the Broncos here tonight. Kerry Keating right there knows his margin for error is slim tonight. Talked to him a little bit before the game. He says, hey, this is a huge task. We're going to go ahead and attack it. But he knows that he's up against it, especially missing those guys you just talked about over there on the sideline. Clark in the corner, tries for three. Schilling. So a size, great feed to Valentine, but it was deflected out of bounds. How about the pass from Schilling got the rebound and the quick feed to Valentine? You know what? It looks like passing is, is fun for the Michigan State guys. I mean, they're, they're all very unselfish. They look for each other. Sometimes you get guys that are just as happy getting an assist as they are scoring the basket. And when that's the case, you're going to have a team that's going to score easily as opposed to teams that like to go one-on-one -on -one and maybe not enjoy so much passing. Touched by Santa Clara. You're also going to find yourself shooting a higher percentage when you've got a good passing team. It's going to be a turnover as Valentine walked. So Santa Clara with the ball, still down 11. Gavin Schilling, sophomore from Chicago, at eight points, three rebounds on Friday. and Brownridge have been quiet tonight. Brownridge, can he change that? Too strong on the three and all smart inside, and that is Schilling. Valentine feet Schilling with the left hand. Nice move. Schilling's done a nice job since coming in. Eight points. I mentioned career high. Yeah, I was just about to say, uh, number three, Clark's got to get going. I mean, he's our leading scorer. There he is with the basketball now. He's got to figure out a way to get himself involved. They'll need his scoring to stay tight. Deep three from Brownridge. And tries to rebound. He's met there by Cratch, and a foul will be called on Santa Clara. So tries had position six feet. Cratch, 6'6". Six, six. And Santa Clara now, Greg, 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. You see the long rebound. Trice is doing a little bit of everything. I think, you know, his his confidence really soared towards the end of last year and then in the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament. He played it really well. Hit some big shots for the Spartans. And picking up right where he left off seemingly this season. He's become more of a leader out there, too. Well, Greg, I asked Tom Izzo about Travis Graham's shoot around today. When he arrived, he was basically a three-point shooter or a guy that could get to the basket. He's really added the mid-range part of his game as his career has continued. Look at his own defense again. That's been Santa Clara's best defense in this game. Look at the rotation defensively. Tries too strong in a three. All Valentine inside. Nobody boxing out. Easy two for Denzel Valentine. He's got five. That's the biggest thing right there, though. Can you rebound out of the zone? Clark can't hit the three. Schilling the rebound. Michigan State will try to run. Off the ball fake. Trice in traffic. Got away with a walk. Ball movement, though. Very impressive. Not staying in anybody's hands too long. Trice knocks down the three. He's got his first field goal tonight. 
And a timeout call. Tom Izzo looking on. Without some key players early this season, shaking his head still as Spartans up huge, 24 to 6. Comes on top of the Broncos from Santa Clara. It's Tom Izzo. Has his team up big tonight. The three point shot. You see the numbers four of ten so far. Coming into this ballgame as a team, Michigan State around 39-40%. Steven Edwards is on for the first time for Santa Clara. Right now it's Clark. And here is Edwards. Drive in the paint, has it swatted away by Schilling. The block to go with five rebounds and four points for Gavin Schilling. Michigan State making it very difficult for Santa Clara to finish at that basket. I mean, they're making the moves occasionally to get in tight, but they are not being given an opportunity really to get it up on that glass. Edwards going it in, celebrating his 19th birthday today. Hit a half court shot at the tail end of Santa Clara's shoot around today to celebrate the birthday. 19, nice. I remember when. <laughs> Tries, leaves it for Clark. Nobody stopped the ball. Clark stuffed it home. Two things that, three things that Michigan State's doing quite impressively. And then finally, that's a big bucket there by Clark. Maybe that gets him going. They're going to need more of that from him. But three things Michigan State's doing extremely well. That's moving the basketball. That's defending in tight on their on their defensive end and pushing it. Valentine can hit the three. Ball loose on the floor, and Clark has it. Lead pass to Edwards. Inside the pew. That's blocked by Clark, and Tum Tum cannot save it. But this crowd is fired up seeing a very solid defensive showing. The freshman Marvin Clark got back and took an easy two away. This is what I'm talking about, defending in tight. I thought that was going to be an easy layup for Santa Clara. I'm sure they did too. But Michigan State has recovered very, very well to deny those in tight baskets. You see Marvin Clark in person. 6'6", 225. You think he had to play football at some point, right? And, and Tom Izzo wasn't sure. He said, he must have had some offers to play football somewhere, right? He said, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. Not a basketball player. Shot clock is under 10. Groundridge in trouble. Santa Clara has to hurry here. Edwards with three. With two. From the foul line. Got it. Steven Edwards. Happy birthday. That was difficult because the defense was there and the shot clock was winding down. All of that making it very difficult. No look. Valentine to Schilling. He's got six. The eyes, Valentine, were pointed at the top of the key, but he saw Schilling underneath the basket. I think Valentine's one of the best passers in the Big Ten. I mean, he sees the whole floor, and boy, does he love to pass it. Ierking shot from Pugh. Can't hit. Valentine the rebound. No surprise. Michigan State will try to run. Clark goes baseline, and he walks. So he turns it over. Third Spartan turnover, and that will take us to a timeout. Marvin Clark has been active all over the floor on defense and on offense. He's got seven Spartans up big. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights at the rack take on St. Peter's. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. This moment here in the timeout, the Michigan State National Champion Cross Country Team was honored here on the court during the timeout. First ever cross country national championship for that outstanding team, Terre Haute, Indiana, over the weekend. Congratulations to them. Marvin Clark, Denzel Valentine, Michigan State up big, 28 11. Michigan State shooting 50% from the field. Santa Clara just 19% on 4 of 21 shooting. Costello. Clark against Nairn. Good defense by the freshman. Edwards in the 
paint. Hubbard got his man up. That leaves Edwards open for three. Well, you all. I, you know, again, good ball movement, good patience. But Michigan State was recovering so well. I mean, they're just a step or two quicker than that. That shot looked open for a moment, but it was hurried because of, you know, again, the, the recovery that we've shown, that we've seen with Michigan State throughout this evening on the defensive end. On two from Naren. Can't hit. Edwards the rebound. Nice block out that time by the Broncos. Brown Ridge trying to get going. Well short. Really forced that one. Valentine has Clark. He'll pull up. Knocks it down. Denzel Valentine. That's a two. He's got seven. Nineteen point game. And we have a whistle and a foul will be called on Michigan State. It'll be on Naren as Tom Izzo visit with the freshman. His first foul, team's fourth. A teaching moment right there, no doubt, as Izzo brought over the freshman. like most great coaches do does not coach the, the clock he's always coaching possessions and with that in mind he expects a high level of execution each and every possession the score takes care of itself traveling violation call at Edwards fifth turnover Some substitutions for both teams Johnson Santa Clara Edwards will come out and Denzel Johnson's back in Clark sits for Michigan State and Kobe Wallman turns for the Spartans. The Spartans will meet Ryder on Thursday in Orlando. Spent a lot of time here at the Breslin Center in December. Valentine short of the three-point try. Clark the rebound. Up the floor. Johnson in the paint. Can't hit the reverse. And here comes Trice. Leaves it for Valentine in the corner. Forbes for three. Wow. Now that goes down as a transition basket. I mean, they're, they're pushing that ball up, getting that early opportunity, and it doesn't always have to be a layup. If it's a wide open three, they take it. Again, Michigan State will look to run. Trice, Wallenman, and he travels. Staying with the Temple there, have you seen that? Kind of what Tom Izzo hinted at earlier today. He wants to see his team run more. Are you seeing that so far in this oh, opening half? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, they are getting it up and down. You know, they've got to be in really good shape, too, to, to keep pushing it like that. I mean, that takes great stamina and endurance on the part of the players out there on the floor. But concerted effort, without a doubt, to get it up the floor quickly. Seven fast break points right now for the Spartans. And they got a low turnover number considering how much they've moved that ball and how much they pushed it. Ely against Costello. This is going to be an offensive foul. This will be on freshman Healy, his first. Sixth team foul. Costello took the charge. He got himself in position. And then Healy took care of the rest with the shove. What a tap. Costello to Wallenman. Costello was really not in good position. Awkward angle, so he just got a tap it to Wallenman, who was there for the easy score. Back the pass. Pugh will launch for three. High arcing three is good for Jarvis Pugh. He's got five. I believe that's his first three-pointer of the season. Not even a tenth one. And in a ball game tonight. Freshman, freshman from Murphy, Texas. Trice from deep. Trice is a much improved basketball player, without a doubt. You can see his leadership out there. 
He's not rushing anything. He's allowing the offense to come to him. He's keeping people involved, and he's working hard on the defensive end. In second three, Michigan State has a team. Six of 13 for beyond the arch. Rice, co-captain, three so far tonight. Shot clock is under 10. Denzel Johnson has a lane. Had it swatted away by Wallenman. Here's Trice. It's back from Forbes. Forbes open another three. And the rebound comes down to Costello. Trice, no look pass. Wallenman can't hit, but a foul. And that will take us to a timeout. Michigan State got off to a great start tonight. We've seen the transition game. We've also seen the three-point game. A couple tonight from Travis Trice. Michigan State leads 38-14. We began our telecast tonight with the bronze, the magic. And how about the real thing? Hall of Famer. Member of the 1979 championship team. Now owner of the Dodgers. The Magic's here tonight. Seeing his Spartans put on a show here in the opening half. 38-14 with 2.28 to play. Stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike Hall and Stephen Bardo be along Chicago Studios. State Farm Halftime Report. Get you caught up on everything around the conference. That means Stephen Bardo is 2 minutes and 28 seconds to finish whatever he's eating right now. He's always eating. I don't blame him. I love the munch on him. You noticed that Urban Magic Johnson had a nice bucket of popcorn in front of him. You know, we, we former athletes, we love our munchies, buddy. You're pretty big around here. If you want some popcorn, I'm sure that could be brought to you. <laughs> Tell you what, it was a joy playing with, uh, with Urban. He consummate teammate. It's all about winning. Did you even envision the career that he had? man he is today did you even envision that well i don't think anyone could ever have envisioned the, uh, the amount of success off the floor i knew he was a great basketball player i knew he was going to have tremendous success if he could stay healthy at the nba level but the fact that he was able to to transcend the game and, and go do great things in business and be as successful and impact others with uh, job opportunities and, and uh, community activism it's, he's been phenomenal Clark back in for Michigan State. Wallenman. Cards for the Spartans. It'll be Santa Clara basketball at 2.20 to play until halftime. Freshman Healy. Redshirt lifted for this one here tonight. As Kerry Keating just needed some bodies to play. And a couple of key post players. You can see they've been forced to play out on that perimeter almost exclusively through this first half. Deep three, too strong for Johnson, and Naren runs it down along the baseline. Everything contested for the most part today. Every, Santa Clara offensively. Everything. You said that. And I talked about three things that Michigan State's done well. There's one thing I think that Santa Clara's done pretty well, and that's play the zone. Haven't been able to rebound as well as you would like out of it, but they have not allowed a lot of wide open shots when they're in their zone. They've moved well. Shot clock is at five now. For Trice. Naren. The three. Schilling the rebound. Brought it down. It was knocked away by Johnson, but Schilling got it back at a fresh 35. Six rebounds for Schilling, a career best. Trice for three. And this time he's going to be called for the foul. Well, the foul's going to be on Santa Clara. I thought that it was Schilling that went over the back, but the foul is on the Broncos. It's on cue as Kerry Keating kind of shakes his head in disgust. That's his second. So it's a one and one here for Michigan State. The Spartans in the bonus the rest of the way, 18 rounds. If you missed it earlier, Marvin Clark Jr. started tonight. Brandon Dawson unable to play with a flu bug. The true freshman got the start. He's performed well. The opening half, Greg. You know, 
I think when you're able to come out on the floor knowing that you only get a specific amount of time, you don't have to worry about making mistakes, you play a little more relaxed. And I think that was the case, especially early for Clark Jr. Under a minute to play. Healy for three. Hubbard got there for Santa Clara for the offensive chance. It was knocked out. And a foul will be called on the Spartans. This is on Schilling. That's his first. 15 foul. As we see again, Natanga and Endumaya out tonight for Santa Clara. Now they only go six and a half points a game combined, but you're talking about six eight and six nine. You're talking about over, you know, 240, 50 pounds. That's needed in a game like this if you're Santa Clara. Brownridge had it knocked away. Oh, and Trice goes behind the back. He'll leave it for Schilling all the way to the score. I'll tell you what, Schilling could be bothered in this first half. You, you cannot slow him down. You can't get in his way. You can't block him out. He's had a very sound first quarter. Eight first, points. First half. Let me correct that. Ties a career high. Five seconds to go. Healy for three with three short. Rebound to Naren Schilling. It will not count should it go, and that will end the opening half in East Lansing. Michigan State up early on Santa Clara, rolling here in the first half, leading 40 to 14. Spartans lead big. We'll join Mike and Steven in Chicago with the State Farm halftime report that is coming up after this timeout on BTN. Basketball on BTN is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Moments away from the second half in East Lansing and our score at the break. All Spartans, Michigan State 40 and the Broncos from Santa Clara 14. Michigan State, you look at some of the first half numbers, Greg, and nobody in double figures, but plenty of balance up and down. Yeah, right now it really doesn't matter for Michigan State who does the scoring. They got a lot of people getting involved. It's balanced. They're getting assists. They're moving the basketball. They are putting a lot of pressure on the defense, especially the transition defense of the Broncos. That's the passing 16 field goals on 13 assists for Michigan State. Meanwhile, Gary Keating and his Broncos team, they fell behind right away. They began this one tonight with a big run, and the Broncos needed to get big performances tonight from their backboard, and that has not happened tonight. Randy Clark, Jared Brownridge have been quiet. Travis Trice, meanwhile, for Michigan State, a couple of threes, six points, a couple of rebounds, five assists. Marvin Clark Jr. starting in place of the flu ridden Brandon Dawson with a very productive. First half for Michigan State. So Broncos with the ball. As we are underway in the second half. Here's Clark on the drive. Hugh open, high arcing three is short, tapped out, and Clark has it. Trace to the trailing Clark. That's a two. Clark has a team high nine. He got a nice rebound. A long rebound and then was a trailer last guy back from Michigan State but the one guy that was unguarded and he got the open shot Clark's done a nice job Clark Jr. Nice job by Brownridge getting Clark up and then we'll shoot two and it was a key graphic Greg as we focus on the lack of scoring from the backcourt that Santa Clara desperately needed tonight well, Brandon Clark we talked about you know his lack of shot opportunity just three points scored by their leading scorer who comes in averaging 20. He's got to start bringing them up a little bit here in the second half. Santa Clara wants to leave out of here, you know, feeling somewhat better about themselves with a, with a, you know, with a tougher, better second half. Again, Santa Clara tonight playing without two post players that are repeating. Love to have out there, Yannick Otaga, Emmanuel, and Dumaya. Look out with injuries, and Dumaya. Swiss reaction in his foot. Matanga with an injured knee can't go. It's five for Michigan State. Clark, Forbes, Costello, Trice, and Valentine. Here is Valentine. 
Tough turnaround from the baseline. He forced that one. The rebound to Denzel Johnson. Clark in space. Nice lead. Denzel Johnson created off penetration by Brandon Clark. That was nice. Finally got a shot and a finish near that basket. Sella muscles that up. Might have been partially blocked by Cratch. And now time called, and Costello is down as his head hit the hardwood. And he is shaken up and now helped up as he's going to shake his head from side to side. Let's take a look here at Costello. It sounded pretty bad as that head just goes back and bangs the floor. The officials catching it smartly, stopping play. Will come out of the game. Gavin Schilling is in, and Tom Izzo smiling. That's that's a good sign. You see the head coach smiling. And Costello, for the time being, appears to be all right. He is smirking so much he will take a seat. And there is Trice on the drive, and he was fouled. And a hand check. And Tom Izzo is a, foot, a, a basketball coach with football in his veins. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's not going to bring you over there. Sympathy. Especially when you're walking under your own power, but you always have to be a little cautious though when a player a Player's head comes in contact with the floor Steel here's Johnson all the way and Denzel Johnson Bucket the senior from Fresno was named to Denzel Washington He's got four Got a pair of Denzels in this game Johnson up the floor, lead pass to Clark. Clark gets it back, he'll pop for three. Shot has not been there tonight. Brandon Clark, and now Forbes lost it. Turnover Michigan State, that's number seven. Here's that steal and a rare push up the floor by Santa Clara, and Johnson's able to finish it. Another basket in the paint, another layup. Layups have been very rare and hard to come by for the Broncos. Santa Clara, Greg, not a team that's shy about launching the three. Lost to Utah State on Wednesday, attempted 24 three point shots, only connected on six. Yeah, that was a pretty tight game, yeah. though, right? Six points or something like that? Here's Johnson bearing the three. So Johnson with five points here in the second half. It's a 9 nothing Broncos run. In that game, Santa Clara had the lead in the second half, did not score a point. In the last five minutes and 52 seconds. Killer on the road. Trice with the answer. Trice again has taken his time. He's really played a masterful game, has five assists. Zero turnovers, and he's been a big part of a lot of that passing and a lot of the pushing of the basketball. Nine points on three threes. There's Johnson is fouled. And fouls on Naren. It's his second. Tumtum Naren is back in for Michigan State. by Trice. He had nowhere to go. It will stay with Santa Clara. Well, when you come in averaging 20, you automatically bring a target with you. It's right on your back. Michigan State has been prepared throughout this game for Brandon Clark, not giving him any space to maneuver. John Ridge backs it up. Against Clark. And Hubbard was out of bounds. Eighth Bronco turnover. Keating will go back to his bench. And Tom Izzo. Looking on. 6 Final Fours National Championship in 2000. I was asking Kerry Keating after Santa Clara's shoot-around today, 
when you look at Tom Izzo's resume, what stands out the most? And he brought up something that, that I, I didn't think of right away. There's the alley-oop that Schilling could not finish. She gets back out to Valentine. Trice for three. Schilling the tap, no. Valentine inside, no, but he's fouled. Michigan State did not give up on that trip. The big boys keeping it alive. And two shots upcoming. Here's that lob attempt. Now Schilling tried to really, really, well, actually he lost contact. He lost control of it. He was up there, but you can see he didn't have full control of it, but Michigan State followed it up several times, ending up with Valentine on the line. Now go ahead and finish that story. I mean, was on Clark, but what Gary Keating was saying, you look at Tom Izzo's resume and last year's class, that marked the first class in Izzo's reign here that did not go to a final four. I know, I know. And, and when they got themselves healthy last year and won the Big Ten tournament, they were a favorite of just about everybody to get to the final four and possibly win the thing. You know, disappointing, but how many coaches would take that? You know, in their 19th year, that would be the first class of four-year players that did not go to a final four. Most coaches would take that. And now you update it. Every class has been to an, at least an Elite Eight. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you update it now. Still good. Huh? Still pretty good. Tom Izzo's made Final Fours as a number one seed, a number six seed, and several other spots in between. And last touch by Naren. So it'll be Santa Clara basketball when we come back. Travis Trice and the Spartans locked in on all ends here tonight. Michigan State leads big. Fifteen forty-six to play, second half. Michigan State forty-seven, Santa Clara twenty-three. Back courtside, in East Lansing, alongside Greg Kelser. I'm Corey Provis, and tonight, Greg, Michigan State wrapping up a very brief two-game homestand before a grueling stretch begins. This tough November stretch continues this weekend in Orlando, and they've done it in impressive fashion. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to get back to what you're trying to do, who you're trying to be as a team. They're trying to be a defensive-minded team. They're trying to be a rebounding team, and they're trying to be a team that puts a lot of pressure on its opponents by racing the ball up the floor. We're seeing all of that in this game. Out of the timeout, it'll be Santa Clara basketball. Second all-time meeting between these two teams. As you mentioned in the opening half, you have to go back to the Maui invitation back in 1995 when Santa Clara won that game. Hubbard off the fake along two. And he battled for the rebound instead. It's Trice. Clark trailing. Schilling. He's been solid tonight, and he was fouled. That'll be on Cratch. I believe that'll be his fourth. It will be. Schilling is six feet nine inches tall. I mean, he's a big target out there. He's athletic. He can get up and down the floor. He can get up on, off the ground. Uh, you know, if he can take this game and the way he played in the first half and use it as a springboard you know, for future success, showing him what he is capable of doing, it will be a huge plus for Michigan State, especially when you get Dawson back in that lineup. Schilling born in Germany, raised in France, and speaks three languages. He misses the layup there, and he's going to be called for the foul as he reached around and got by Healy. That'll be his second. Three team fouls now on Schilling and the Spartans. As a force in a turnover, Edwards had nowhere to go. Trice, can he respond? No, but a foul. Clark tried to get back defensively, but Trice fouled. He will shoot two. Here they come, as they have all night. You had better get back against Michigan State. And in order to give yourselves a chance to get back, you got to take care of the ball, and you got to take good shots. Bad shots sometimes, just like turnovers. They springboard transition. I love the teams run, you know that? 
That's the brand of basketball that I have always enjoyed. And that's transition basketball, being in good shape and getting up and down the floor. Knocks down two. He now has 11 points, six assists. Greg also not a single turnover. Had a very clean game. Very clean game. And impressive when you consider he's been the catalyst out there. He's had that ball a lot. Richard play tonight. Just three games, but his assist to turnover ratio impressive seven to one. We've seen that play out tonight, yet not a single turnover. Clark, athletic move, but no finish. And good to see Costello back in for Michigan State. Trice. And there's the first turnover. And it's knocked out of bounds. And a foul, I believe, will be called. Nope, just knocked out. No foul. Oh, nope. There will be a foul. I'll be on Costello. It's his second and the fourth team foul on Michigan State. Coach Izzo looks like he's trailing. <laughs> Not 26 points up. Edwards in the corner. Brown Ridge back to Hubbard for three. And Valentine the rebound. There and up the floor. Trice to deep two. That took three and a half, maybe four seconds. I was watching the shot clock. The ball was leaving Trice's hands at 32. That's how quickly they get the ball up and down the floor here, folks. Travis Trice has 13. Tom Izzo, you mentioned the intensity. The many faces of the outstanding coach. Here, number 20, East Lansing. His Spartans of big 51-24. BTN Basketball presented by April Lair. 13-48 to play. All Spartans. Michigan State, 51. Santa Clara, 23. Watch the clock, folks. 35 occurs at the rebound. One dribble, and that ball is up the floor and off the hands of Trice in three and a half seconds. That's how quickly the Spartans have been tonight in terms of transition basketball. 17 points for the Spartans. Best break tonight. That was Trice so far. He will sit 13 points, six assists, one turnover a moment ago. He's hit three threes. Captain Trice had a career best 25 points against Navy, the opener. Brandon Clark, the senior, against Valentine, never left his feet. Shot clock is under 10, and Healy walked. Another good defensive possession for Michigan State. 10th. Bronco turnover. You know, unfortunately, the Bron Broncos never really found a way to get or to help Brandon Clark get shots tonight. You know, he's tried to dribble himself and create his own offense, but that's been very difficult against the taller and more physical Michigan State defenders. Mid-range game there from Valentine. Tom Izzo spoke about that today, how that part of his game has also improved. In these two, I think Valentine, I think he needs to be for the Spartans this year. He needs to become more of a score. We know he can pass. He needs to get a score assist the game, but he also needs to score 13 to 15 points a game. That would be huge for Michigan State if he can do that. Mark, another miss. He's not one for 10 from the field tonight. Shot fake. Some traffic. No whistle. Got it back a second time, and then it's knocked out. It'll be Broncos basketball. Substitutions. Looks like Colby Wallenman will check back in for Michigan State. Jarvis Pugh returns for Santa Clara. And Marvin Clark Jr., the freshman from Kansas City, will get some words from his head coach and then sit down. Second half on a 9-0 run. Michigan State working on its zone. Pretty much a man-to-man -man team, but from time to time, we flash zone. This is a great opportunity to work on that and anything else that you want against live competition. 
foul called on Denzel Valentine, his second, fifth team foul. Trice will check back in at the next one. Only four points tonight. Can't finish. Hughes tap. No. Costello lost it, but he was fouled. It's on Brown Ridge. He picks up the personal foul. Brown Ridge, another miss. He's now 0 for 6 from the field tonight. He showed Costello in the open his numbers from his preceding game where he had 13 points. Not scoring it tonight, but he is rebounding the ball. Costello, eight rebounds at one point. Trice, the runner, no. Speaking of rebounds, another one for Costello, but he throws it away. Red by Brown Ridge. And there he goes in his first bucket. First field goal tonight, Jared Brown Ridge. A couple of free throws earlier. His five five points, but Tom Dizzo will call a timeout. 11.35 to play in the second half. Denzel Valentine at Michigan State on its way to win number three tonight here at East Lansing. 11.35 to play, second half. Michigan State 53, Santa Clara 25. Some news and notes around the Big Ten. New AP poll is out. Wisconsin ranked number two in the country. Four teams in the AP top 25. And how about Illinois? Second in the nation in scoring. Rebonte Rice and company. More than 100 per game. Are they playing 48 minute games for uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. the Illinois? 20 minute halves, huh? Good. 103 on average. And John Gross and the line eye scoring. And Will early this season. There's Edwards inside, the freshman from Oklahoma. He now has four. Well, Michigan State and Wisconsin only play one time this year to be in March. That game will be played in Madison. We'll talk more about that and some other Big Ten news as we move along tonight here in East Lansing. Travis Trice has had the touch of the on the arc tonight. Michigan State 56, Broncos 27. Under 11 minutes to play here in the second half. BTN goes where you want, when you want it. The BTN to go presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live hoops on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. For more, visit btn to gocom Also available in the App Store and on Google Play. Download it right now. It's Stephen Edwards celebrating his 19th birthday today. And we talked about this back in the first half. Wrapping up shoot around today. Half court shot. And there it is. Money. 18 year old. Yes. Happy birthday, Stephen Edwards. From Oklahoma tonight. His Broncos go down huge in the second half. 56 27 Spartans. Costello tried to establish position, but he was knocked down by Pugh, and a foul will be called on Santa Clara redshirt freshman Jarvis Pugh. That's number three. Sixth team foul. I mentioned before the last break the fact that Michigan State and Wisconsin will just play one time in the regular season, March 1st in Madison. A lot will be riding on that game for sure. That late in the season. Spartans will open up conference play here on December 30th against Maryland. Costello is fouled again by Pugh, and that's going to be his fourth. And that will put Michigan State in the bonus. The rest of the night, one and one upcoming here for Matt Costello. Costello, front of the one and one, can't hit. And Denzel Johnson, the rebound. Johnson, long two, and the tap comes down to Tum Tum Marin. How fun is that name to say? Tum Tum. Who rolls? Five on the floor for 
Michigan State with the right hand. Costello too strong. Tapped out though to Forbes. Nice feed. Costello fouled. This will be on Evan Wardlow. The extra pass once again, Greg. The extra pass is usually going to end up in a high percentage shot. Take a look at the upcoming schedule. And again, some tough games upcoming for Michigan State, namely this weekend in Orlando. And there is a chance that Michigan State and Kansas would play on Sunday in the title game of the Orlando Classic. Hey, miss free throw. Hey, six of 13. Michigan State's got to get this free throw thing worked out. And Tom Izzo knows it. You know, you'll survive it tonight. But the schedule is about to ratchet up for you. And if you cannot go to the free throw line and hit your free throws, you will not win games against better competition. Sparks two there, and I miss hope. You see it right there, kind of your point. That that expression says it all. See, the other thing you got, the other thing you got to realize in this situation, you're going to the free throw line. You're at home. You're up by a large margin. These are not pressure free throws. That's a good point. Uh, Santa Clara turned it over. Clark was out of bounds, and that's the 11th turnover. And that's a valid point. If you're missing him now, the mistakes are much higher. Conference games, tightly contested games. Perhaps we'll see one this weekend in Orlando. That's a stat that looms large. Yeah. Crossover. Trouble and has to call the timeout. To stop the clock with 9.30 to play. And Michigan State leading by 30. 57-27. Well, Friday, it's a triple header of hoops on BTN. First, the Buckeyes take on James Madison in Maryland. Rose Monmouth cap it off. At 9 Eastern, Indiana and UNC Greensboro. Coverage begins at 4 Eastern, presented by April Air. Coming up on Friday, right here on BTN and BTN to go. Michigan State will say goodbye to the President Center for the rest of the month. Plenty of home games upcoming here in December, but Spartans opening things up 6 of 8 on the road to begin the season. That section will be ready. Spartans come back. So Valentine back in. Valentine tonight, 11 points, 10 rebounds, fifth career double double. Shot clock is at three. Deep three from Trice, and he knocks down another one. He had one of similar length in the first half. Meeting Trice at the three-point line defensively isn't good enough because he'll launch from four or five feet behind that line with great accuracy. I really, really like Travis Trice and how he has improved himself as a player and a leader out there on the floor. Wardlow buries the two. Fishman from Lakeview Terrace, California, did not score in seven minutes on Wednesday at Utah State. Trice now with 16 points on 4-3. It's the steal. And on the other end is Jalen Richard. His first bucket tonight, sophomore from Arizona. Pass and now here is Trice and he was bumped and he was bumped by Denzel Johnson. This will be a one and one upcoming. Look at Trice with the shot clock winding down. Now the defender is at the three point line. Problem is Trice is three four feet behind it and he shot that thing with ease. Nice to be able to have a guy when that clock is winding down, you put it in his hands, he can make something happen either for himself or a teammate. Travis Trice seems to have that ability. Foul was on Jarvis Pugh. He is fouled out. This is a one and one now. 19 fouls. And eight. Another miss, but Schilling runs down the rebound. 
Valentine, touch pass, right corner three from Flores. And Schilling had position inside, and he was fouled. He was battling with Nate Cratch in the low blocks. Cratch picks up the foul. Magic looks on. His alma mater. Michigan State up huge tonight with 8.06 to play. Irvin's a big sports fan. He watches the game differently than most. And he's in the game. You know what I mean? Schilling at the line. Now to the rest of the way for Michigan State. Spartans now with that first free throw from Schilling as a team, 8 of 16. Pair. The foul is on Cratch, by the way. He is also fouled out. So, Carlos Jew, Nate Cratch, fouled out for Santa Clara tonight. Under eight to go. Bounce inside. Johnson shooting over Schilling and scores. So, Johnson's had a very productive second half. Nine points. Nine. Clark for three. Junior is second three. He's got 12 for the game. Very nice uh, left-handed stroke there. And Clark Jr. started the game off with a three-pointer. Started tonight for Brandon Dawson, unable to play with the flu. That's a deep three. And Clark and showing the rebound nearly through the line. to Forbes. He will try it. All Schilling inside. Put back yeah. is there. Schilling's had a terrific game tonight, Greg. Yeah, he, he's just too big and too strong for the Broncos in this game. 12 points, 11 rebounds for Gavin Schilling. 6'9", 240. They haven't been able to keep him away from the basket. He's going wherever he wants to on the floor. His first career double-double. Gavin Schilling making his presence felt tonight. Career best performance. Michigan State up huge. Basketball on BTN is presented by April Air. Feel good inside. And brought to you in part by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. 6.51 to play. Student body per usual came out. And the students seeing their Spartans rolling. 67-33 under 7 to play. Gavin yeah, Schilling tonight. 6'9 sophomore. Greg, he has really stepped up on both sides of the floor. I think he's learning something about himself tonight, and that's that, you know, if he stays out there on the floor, boys foul trouble, and, and, and is active, he can get some things done. Look at him, a tower of power inside. Michigan State has 20 offensive rebounds. He has seven of them. And here is Schilling all the way. And the hammer. Right on cue, Schilling now with 14. And another assist for Travis Trice. Trice is going to be called for the foul as he reached. Seven assists. There's the seventh assist. And Schilling with his sixth field goal. You know, he kind of reminds me of a guy that played here 13, 14 years ago. About the same size as Schilling. And he went on to have a decent NBA career. Rebounding the basketball, scoring in tight, and I'm talking about Jamie Fike. Reminds me a lot of Fike. Free throw coming here for Clark. Clark makes a pair. Full-court pressure that has been applied at times in this game by Santa Clara, but to not much effectiveness. They make Michigan State take a little time off that clock, getting it up, up the court. Here's a three from Clark, another one. His third three tonight. 
They're out there. Target practice now pretty much for Michigan State. And Greg, that is back-to-back 15-point -back games for the freshman Marvin Clark Jr. Off the shot fake, Hubbard over Valentine gets the ball. Coach Izzo didn't like that score. He popped off that bench, get his point across. He's not coaching this game anymore, folks. He's coaching the next one or the next two. In terms, in terms of looking for a certain level of execution from his guys. There's the law of Trice to Valentine. Another pass and two more for Valentine. He has also had a solid game. Give him 13. Clark had it knocked away by Wetzel. So Keenan Wetzel, redshirt senior from Monroe, Michigan. Some time here late. Marvin Clark Jr. Company, the alley -oop feed there, Greg Trice setting up Valentine. Travis Trice has seen everything tonight, everything that's in front of him and backed in back of him. He's made some shovel passes to people trailing him. Uh, yeah, he may be done for the night, but if he is, he's had one terrific game tonight in, in a lot of different categories, especially leadership. Back in for Michigan State. As Greg mentioned, Trice is on the bench right now. Under 10 for Santa Clara. On the shot clock, Jalen Richard. Here's Brownridge, the floater. Tapped out, Clark, and Aaron wasn't ready. Instead, the rejection, another near slot. That will go falls the second try. Here's Valentine, went all the way, hit the deck hard. And he is now on his feet. He will jog down the other end. Clark bumped and fouled by Naren. Well, he's third, but Valentine joining his teammates, but he had a hard fall as he went aggressively to the basket. Valentine that time never really got the lift. On that layup attempt, came up slow, but he stays out there. The last thing Michigan State can afford is to have any more guys go down for any reason. Missing Dawson tonight, a couple of others. Jerome Bess, he's out until mid to late December. Broken foot, Alvin Ellis is out. With a right ankle injury as we look at Gavin Schilling, the game he has had, he has worked hard, and with that said, he is tonight's recipient. Duluth trading hardest working player. First career double-double, 14 points, 11 rebounds, one block. Minus Dawson, he said at the outset, where would Michigan State go? And they went inside of Schilling tonight. Well, the opportunity was there. Again, he knew he would be out there on the floor. He knew he was going to get a certain amount of numbers, so he was, com he was com comfortable. Even if a guy like Dawson, there's going to be at least 10, 12 shots available spread around. Rebounds that you got to go get. Schilling did that tonight. Valentine, the miss. Richard pops for three. Strong and Holland in the rebound. Santa Clara now three of 20 for the on the yard. Comes back out to Nair one more time. Valentine. Tip back down to Brownwood. Three-point shooting. The Sparks now 11 of 25. Clark is at three. Speaking of threes, there's one for Jared Brownrigg, the sophomore from Aurora, Illinois. He's nine points. Aaron will drive, draws attention. Valentine, another one, another miss. Another three, so back to back trips and Brownridge struggled with his shot in Santa Clara's last game. He struggled tonight, but has been better here in the second half. But still, the Spartans up big doing that without that man right there, Brandon Dawson. Under the weather, flu like symptoms, and unable to play tonight. Well, Wednesday night on BTN, the Buckeyes return to action when they take on Campbell. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, presented by April Air on BTN and BTN to go. 
Shannon Scott, 16 assists last night. Ohio State's big win. A Buckeyes single game passing record. 16 assists in one game. Also got some love I saw on Twitter from Aaron Kraft. See why Aaron would let him know about that. Speaking of Ohio State, it's some recent performances of D'Angelo Russell. Fantastic young player, 32 and 9. Paris LeVert, great start. James Blackman Jr., young player for Indiana. Trent Petaway and the Cornhuskers lost at Rhode Island over the weekend. His turnovers were high in that game, but still a very dangerous player. Frank Kaminsky, preseason Big Ten Player of the Year. He and the Badgers are rolling. Decker, Nigel Hayes. Wisconsin, a couple of good wins last week. There's some solid teams. Boise State, Wisconsin, Green Bay, two teams that could be in the tournament. Brent Forbes knocks down the three. He's got ten. Edwards can't hit. On the layup. Here's Naren. Three on two. Santa Clara gets back. And here's Clark. Another three. Fell out and hovered the rebound. John Ridge off the crossover. And Valentine pulls it down. Eleven rebounds now for Valentine. Oh, he forced it. Trying to set up Wallman inside. It was picked off. And here's Brown Ridge. Has to lay up the tap. No from Healy, but he was fouled. So a 219 to play. We will step aside. Tom Izzo looks on, grabbing his chin, shaking his head. Still, his Spartans are up by 30. BTN Basketball presented by April Lair. Final 219 tonight from the Breslin Center. Michigan State up by 30, 77, 47 over Santa Clara. Michigan State tonight again has been very unselfish. Greg with the basketball. You see the numbers 22 assists on 28 made field. The ball movement started early for the Spartans, pushing it up the floor. Just, you know, moving well without the ball. You know, they helped each other get open. They set screens, and if you were open, you got the ball tonight. And it's a good template for offensive execution on down the road. You put pressure on your teams when they have to move defensively and they have to rotate from one side of the floor to the other and get back defensively. You put a lot of pressure on your opponents if you can be consistent with that approach. Hi, Healy at the free throw line. Passing the ball, Travis Trice has eight assists. Total 19 points. Trevor Bonheim has checked in for Michigan State for the first time tonight. The junior from Saginaw. Keenan Wesson also back in for the Spartans. State will meet Ryder on Thursday in Orlando to continue the Orlando Classic. Santa Clara also played Thursday. Broncos will see Tennessee. The shot clock is under 10 for Trice. The basket in the corner. Russell has to force for three. And on the Broncos and Edwards. And Edwards hits the deck. He was fouled by Bryn Forbes. Second foul on Forbes. About oh, 10 team fouls. Forbes. Yeah, Forbes was not able to fully cut off the, the baseline. Edwards with the quickness to get to that baseline line with the left hand dribble. Hey, better days ahead for Santa Clara. They're going to get their people back healthy, hopefully. Get their interior guys back soon. They'll be a different team. This is uphill battle today without those two guys right there. Yannick Tonga on the left and Manuel Dumai on the right. Both out. Injured. Cannot play. Broncos predicted to finish in a tie for seventh in the West Coast Conference this year. Gonzaga's the overwhelming favorite. A year ago, Santa Clara played. Gonzaga pretty tight. Team to shoot. 
Rice off the screen. Back to Wetzel. In traffic. Wallenman gets it back. His putback rolls in. Colby Wallenman. He's got four. Michigan State's got another offensive rebound. 52-31 edge. Including 21 offensive rebounds for Michigan State tonight. There's Wallerman getting his. Michigan State will improve to 7-0 all-time against West Coast Conference teams here at home. The Eagles will have seen the eighth straight loss against top 25 teams. Shot clock at nine. Deep three, Trice. Rebound pulled down by Edward. Shot clock is off. 20 to play. Denzel Johnson missed the tap. Birthday boy Edwards to one. Stephen Edwards wrapping up his 19th birthday with a seven point game. And Bryn Forbes and the Spartans will dribble out the remaining seconds. Michigan State now three and one on the year. The Broncos fall to two and two. Tom Izzo, Perry Keating shake hands at half court. Michigan State, Greg, tonight a convincing win, 79-52. They worked on a lot of things. They have to be very impressed with the way they were able to move the ball in the, in the half court, move it up the floor in transition. Their defense allowed very little, especially in the painted area. Uh, they played a sound game both ends of the floor. They got a lot of people involved. No Brandon Dawson, no problem tonight. Travis Trice with 19. Marvin Clark Jr. starting tonight, 15 points on three threes. Final score tonight from East Lansing, Michigan State 79, Santa Clara 52. For Greg Kelzer, I'm Corey Provis. Stay tuned for BTN Live. Coming up next, good night from the Breslin Center and East Lansing, Michigan.